WRTR Real Talk Radio. Featured guest DJs, original shows, the hottest DJs from around the world. You don't have bags. <laughs> Quit looking at the camera like that. You, you don't have bags. You're gorgeous as ever. It's been a week. Yes, it has. And I guess we just finished up the last week of Black History Month 2024. But rest assured that the black don't stop blacking here on WRTR Real Talk Radio. Welcome to a new week. Thanks for coming back. What to do, niggas? How are y'all? I'm just lovely. (laughs) I'm just wonderful. How are you? (laughs) Wonderful. Tell you what. Mm. Miss Larry. I'm tired. I ain't been feeling that grand. I need rest. You've been overworking yourself because you out here singing and carrying on. I saw you online. Don't act like just because it was posted mm-hmm. elsewhere that we didn't see it because we was looking. <laughs> so sorry I couldn't come out. You know how my weeks are lately. Yeah. It's cool. But, but it went amazing. People still talking about it. I'm still getting inboxed about it. It's crazy. People are looking mm-hmm. forward to next month's one, which is on the 17th, if I'm not mistaken. St. Mm-hmm. Patrick's Day. Always a good time. Um, right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it should be um it should be lit. I'm gonna be doing my new joint. Um releasing March 14th. Hmm. Busy, 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 busy. I feel like St. Patrick's Day smells like smell. It, it's it's gotta smell like insurrection. It's gotta smell like January 6th or something. <laughs> what? I just feel like it does. What? <laughs> anyway. Oh, are you Ticket Man mood for the day? What's um, the vibe? My vibe is, uh, I don't know what my vibe is today. Curly, I'll tell I you know, that. I you know, let your yeah. hair oh, like it. <laughs> I, 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 I let my hair down, so yeah, you know. It's longer you know. than I actually thought it was. Wow. Oh, it is. Hang time. Where you go get uh, yours retwisted? Who to retwist um, it? My cousin does. She's a um, stylist. She um, has her own little um, shop, and okay, she does okay. it for every right. three months. It was different from this. I just actually took it out, and so now it's like all crinkled. So yeah, because I just took it out of uh, the style she had it in. <laughs> so, like, yeah, yeah. I'm supposed to be. <laughs> he is giving <laughs> full on white. Do like this, yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> mm, my mood is just okay today. I know I gotta go. Um, I'm supposed to celebrate my mom's birthday was yesterday. She just turned the big sixty. Yeah. Nice. Oh, so, happy birthday! Yes. I'm supposed to be going over to my um sister's place today. Shout out to Abby. Some, hey. some of the family um coming up from Fredericksburg, Virginia, right. and other places to um help her celebrate her birthday. So that's what we're supposed to be doing. That's what's up today. Well, speaking of fun shit, what fun black shit did y'all learn about this week? What we then mm. did now and you jumping all out there. I already knew, but I didn't know. Rosa Parks wasn't the first person, first lady to refuse to get up out of her seat. Mm. 1855, a 15-year-old girl, Claudette Colvin, mm. used to give up her seat on a segregated bus. I know that's right. A full nine months before Rosa Parks' famous act of civil disobedience, a 15-year-old Claudia Colvin was arrested on March 2nd, 1955, for refusing to give up her seat on a segregated Montgomery, Alabama bus. It said that oh. she was um, traveling home from school when the bus driver ordered her, along with three fellow black students, to give up their row of seats to a white passenger. Colvin's you friends, ab- yeah, it says Colvin's friends obliged, but she refused to move. Mm. At school, she had recently learned about um, abolitionists and later recalled that it felt like Sojourner Truth was on one side pushing her down and Harriet Tubman was on the other side pushing her down so she couldn't get up. I know that's right. The ancestors <laughs> stepped in. But you know what? I feel like that separate but equal shit, I don't ever feel like niggas disagreed to that. I feel like if it were really separate but equal, <laughs> niggas would have mm-hmm. never disputed that. Like, I feel like <laughs> somewhere... <laughs> Niggas would have been like, um, so we get the same thing, but we ain't got to deal with y'all? Exactly. Cool. Like, uh, I don't feel like it was that way, but wow. Thank you for that, Miss Lyric. You want next All to me? All right. What I learned was something called the whistle walk. 
I did not know this. What that is, is the whistle walk was the walkway leading from the plantation's outside kitchen to the big house. Servants were forbidden from taking bites of food that they cooked. To prevent this action, enslaved cooks would be required to whistle as they walked to the big house. Oh. Mm. Is that why they hang? Oh, you know what? That's the same concept of hanging little bells on cats' necks because they're so quiet so you can alert. So you, oh. Yeah. oh, they did oh, that too. Wow. You know they did what? that too. Did you not know that? No, I'm sure they did. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. They had collars with, with bells on them for the slaves that tried oh, to run away. I'm, I'm more than certain. Yes, absolutely. Wow. I've seen pictures sure and did. everything else. Wow. Sure All right. So basketball legend LeBron James is bringing his winning touch to the beauty industry. With the launch mm. of the Shop Collection, a new male grooming range set <clears throat> to debut in April. So that's right, boys. Washing that ass ain't just for women and gays you anymore. Know what? Never was, but <laughs> you know. Anyways, the shop collection aims to redefine male grooming. The collection set to hit 1,600 Walmart stores across the U.S. boosts an impressive lineup of grooming essentials, from nourishing shampoo to a styling promenade. Each product <laughs> reflects LeBron James' dedication to providing quality grooming solutions for men. This is not an ad. When, <laughs> with, with prices starting as at an affordable $10, this collection aims to make self-care accessible to all. So now, boys... Y'all can wash that ass that. and make rent. I cannot. I cannot. There you go. <laughs> I'm sold. I'm washing that ass things. and make rent. Two things. <laughs> Hopefully Walmart don't try to shelf that. Oh, oh you, you know oh, it. You know, hey, there you go. Because they have that go. tendency with black creators of, um, well, you know, <laughs> just go back and do episodes. We, we, I don't and, know if I would trust and me, Shannon. And meanwhile, yeah. we're the ones that's making them money. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know if I would trust hair products from him. Ain't he thinning at the top? <laughs> That's what I was about to say. That's what I was about to say too. I was about to say that too. Y'all leave LeBron when alone. He, said, he did when something. When he first said something about grooming, <laughs> That's the first. That's the first thing that popped up in my head. I mean, a beard, a beard <laughs> kit, yeah, because that beard is full. It, it is. It looks fresh. Right. It looks clean. It looks. It looks healthy. Right. But you say shampoo, my nigga. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. About, I, don't know. Mm. I, I would trust Beyonce's line before I trust. LeBron. Mm, 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 I don't know mm. if it, if it's pushing these little dirty ass gremlins out here to wash. <laughs> by all means, it's as long as it has a five percent coke in it. I'm down. Only reason I said that I seen Beyonce say her hair long mm. and pretty as shit. Mm -hmm. they, Beyonce got that like that stitched wig that that. That you know what? Shit. Shut up. <laughs> she got all that. And, that joint. Is, are you giving me the finger because you you gonna talk about that later? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Oh, mm. okay. you, you still can. I ain't going to detail. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Speaking of which, guess we'll move it right along with if it were lyric. Up next, we'll be right. <laughs> Y'all so damn dumb. Mm -hmm. Hey, a cop in Florida shot at a handcuffed person that was already inside of his police car. You want to know why? Because an acorn fell on the car and he somehow thought that was the handcuffed person shooting at him. Also in recent news, 215 bodies were found behind a Mississippi jail and many of their family members didn't even know they were dead. Hasn't made as many headlines as it should, though. Speaking of headlines, you may have heard about the deputy in Tennessee who was found dead in a river. Except he wasn't simply found dead. He was texting while driving and drove into a river, killing himself and the woman he arrested who was in the back of the car. Over in LA, Niani Finlayson called the police to report that her ex-boyfriend was assaulting her. The police responded and because Niani was holding the knife that she was using to protect herself, they shot and killed her. A woman named Ebony Pouncey in Texas was also shot by police because she was mistaken for an intruder in her own house. In Mississippi, inmates are hired out to work at places like restaurants and factories for below minimum wage and sometimes no payment at all. If that sounds like slave labor or convict leasing, that's because it is. Activists in Atlanta, where I live, are catching RICO charges 
for protesting Cop City. And lastly, we already know that our tax dollars fund police brutality, but in other news, a dance team. Maybe not what you should do, but definitely she would. If you were literate. All right, here we go. Mm. <laughs> and I'm back. Like I never left. This is your girl, Miss Lyric. And I'm back <laughs> with my segment of If It Were Lyric, where I talk about your situationships, friendships, and relationships, and everything in between, based on you guys' questions that you send me in my DMs and at my Gmail at Lick Bravado. Now, I'm going to try to get through this because I think Ticket Man got a go, Lena. Mm. So I'm going to go first. Mm. All right. Mm. My first one is Anonymous. What All you right. got to say? How do I get out of a toxic relationship with someone who threatens suicide when I try oh to break up with them? Oh, wow. This has happened twice. I tried to break up and he gets on social media or chats in his friends group and tells them that he'll kill himself. I know I made mistakes because I tend to say unnecessary things when we argue, but it's something I've been working on. And for the past few arguments, I've avoided these and focused on communicating with each other. But he tells me that he cries every time we argue. Not only that, I never actually get closure after each fight because he only says, I'm fine, it's okay. Just the basic things to basically get me out of his face. <laughs> this wow. has prompted me to try to break up again. And I feel it is best for his mental health as well. He has stated that he's emotionally dependent on me and can't bear to even stop talking to me for a few hours. One of our mutual friends has begged me to comfort and talk to him because he has sent suicide threats to their group chat. Wow. How can I leave him without feeling guilty? Ooh, trigger warning. Dang, that's crazy. Oh. Well, first and foremost, you shouldn't stay in a relationship out of manipulation because that's what it is. And he's gaslighting you into... into making you feel like you have to be his shoulder to lean on that is not, absolutely not your responsibility to do that um the only thing that i would recommend is when he starts making these threats call somebody girl <laughs> it's not sni it's not snitching if it's saving a life honestly sometimes we as people feel like we have to take on responsibilities that are too big for us you are not certified to deal with this type of situation. They are professionals who are certified to do so. And I suggest you call on some of those people. Mm. Different hotlines. Um, maybe try to get him into um, a therapist. So reach out to his family. Get them involved. Everybody needs to be on board. These so-called friends, they need to be on board as well. Because it's not your responsibility to stay in a relationship because somebody is threatening suicide because nine times out of 10, I've seen it in news articles across the years that when somebody does that, they end up doing a crime of passion and taking you with them. Yikes. It's true. Y'all seen it. Mm -hmm. My suggestion is bow out gracefully and mm -hmm get his family and friends involved into mm. getting him the help that he needs because you can't be manipulated to stay in a relationship that's unhealthy and toxic. Hmm. Period. Thoughts? Well, Period. No. I mean, that's cutthroat. I try to stay, steer away from, you know, thoughts and talks of that kind of behavior because I don't know how to respond. I've actually never been trained, none of that. So right. I will stick that, I will leave that to the professionals. And once again, trigger warning for y'all. That that's the thing. Definitely right. have to leave it to the professionals. Mm, excuse me. This is coming oh. from Denny. Dear Lyric, I am a 41 year old gay man. Although I was raised in a conservative religious family, I'm out of the closet and proud to be living as myself. Mm -hmm. For much of my adult life, I have attracted mostly women. I have always tried to handle these situations with as much tact as possible. However, some women won't some women won't be let down. Oh, some women won't be let down easily. 
mm. on the occasions, <laughs> on the occasions when I have been forced to out myself to them, I have lost my female acquaintances. I really mm. enjoy spending time with, or the friendship begins to deteriorate. I have tried introducing them to straight male friends and deflecting flirtatious banter. Am I confused or do some women genuinely believe they can change my orientation? <laughs> I don't want <laughs> I mm. don't want to give up on female friendship. Am I doing something wrong by being myself? <laughs> no. <laughs> First off, you dumped them and then you called me. You sound like my type. No, I'm kidding. Uh, oh, kidding. You know what? <laughs> some of y'all. Mm -mm. First of all, you got to continue to be yourself and eventually you'll attract genuine people who will understand you as you are. You can't force yourself to try to have friendships with people who don't align with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you feel like you have to change your, your who you are as a person to be a friend with to be friends with some person that's not a friendship that you should be maintaining because it's right. not genuine right it has to be a two-way street not a one-way street um right. and a real friend would know boundaries you'd only have to tell them once hmm. hey not interested this is the thing you know what i'm saying if they pushy 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 get them out of here they don't respect you or your boundaries. Right. They pussy, pussy, pussy. Uh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> you know? I mean, it, it, it's fact. Like, um, yes, some women do feel as though that they're that bitch that they can do the switcheroo can you. and can convince you somebody are. else does. But mm. you know what I'm saying? That's delusional. Because if a person knows who they are as a person and knows what they want, then that it is what it is. Like nobody can change that unless they feel like they want to change that. So if your friends aren't being respectful of what you're saying, those are not your friends. Those are just associates at this point. So mm -hmm. eventually keep being your genuine self and you're going to attract people who are attracted to that genuineness. Mm. So that's my advice. All right. Well, there you go. Period. I'll tell you what, the magic in the VJ is birthing the new VJ, people. I cannot. I'm saying <laughs> it's birthing new people. It's not rebirthing niggas that already exist. You can't remake somebody from the power of your pussy alone. Sorry. Mm. Don't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> Moving along. Um, okay, this one is a doozy. And I ch I clicked on it because the subject of the email said, Congrats on the single. So I wanted to, you know, say something. Mm. So anyway, so I clicked on it. It says, Dear Lyric, congrats on your new single. I loved hearing it on last week's show. You all will probably clown me for this, but don't talk. <laughs> to, but I don't talk to too many people. So me emailing a podcast is out of character, but I can't tell this to anybody that I actually know in person. Mm. So here you go. <clears throat> recently, I've been seeing this fine ass man that recently moved around my neighborhood. We started talking one day when his dog ran into my yard and scared my dog. Since then, more conversations have developed, and four months later, we have been kicking it pretty regularly. We would meet up for happy hour, and you know how things go. One thing led to another, and we've been spending adult time that usually ends late in the evening. He goes yeah. home, he goes home, I go to bed, and the cycle continues. So perhaps I didn't notice the bombshell I'm about to drop. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, you see one night toward the end of the night <clears throat> where he usually gets up and goes home i asked him not to he obliged made himself comfortable and held me all night the next morning i got up before he did and after coming into the bathroom girl i noticed his feet specifically his big toenail what? it was it was yellow cracked and looked awful Oh. I'm thinking that over the course of time, we. I'm thinking that over the course of time we were intimate. I never noticed it, but now I do, and it's a turn off. When he woke up, I asked about it and whether he he would be down to allow me to take him to get a pedicure. He was not. Accused me of only doing. Uh, I'm sorry, only dating soft men, and that real men have bad feet. 
he said that he would he said that he would never be he said that he would never be like them other dudes sitting in salons looking goofy and bitch whipped. Mm-hmm. Now I'm a, and she says now I'm a Christian woman and these yellow toenails of his seem all but Christ like. If it were you, <laughs> would you end things? Just make him wear socks around you or give some dramatic uh, ultimatum like it's me or the claws. Girl, uh, glad I can make you all chuckle, but I'm seriously in need of an unbiased opinion. Bless you all. Hallie. And if you wanted to know, I'm from Texas. <clears throat> Girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. If, if people be worried about the wrong thing is a person, it would what? be you, pal. Because <laughs> what? No. Well, that so, is... First of oh. all, mm. first of all, here we go. That is very shallow. That is very shallow. <laughs> it is extremely it? shallow. It is. It is. is it? If you're having, if you have a connection, a real connection with someone, now a real one, you have a real connection with someone, the sexual chemistry seems to be on point, even though mm. mm, Miss Christian having mm. an un- unwed sexual okay. relations. Mm. Right? Mm. Oh. <laughs> I don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? Like, why are you so focused on his foot? He could have like a health problem. It could be a genetic issue. Girl, if you don't make that man put some socks on, mm. and you don't, you don't get to talk because you mm. you don't <laughs> like, stuff like that. So you're I don't biased. like stuff like what oh clean God. bodies. Why do I have to be the pink <laughs> elephant? Because say, I no, she didn't body. say he was dirty. Mm. She said she his foot was jacked up. Yes, yeah, didn't say up. he was dirty. A yellow toenail. That does you, not you mean know, that. Well. That could mean something is going on in with his health. Yeah. That could mean his diet is mm-hmm. is not right. And these are all things that she can help him with internally. This yeah. is a yellow that don't mean toenail. He's dirty. It's it didn't a say yellow his, toenail. It does not say uh, that <laughs> his shit was black. Got fungus and fallen about to fall off his joint. I she cannot have a connection. I cannot have a health problem. There's an underlying yeah. health issue there. I took cosmetology. <laughs> I know this for a fact. <laughs> so, what she should have done? Don't mm. recommend a pedicure. Recommend a foot doctor. Mm, penicillin. Recommend that. You know recommend what? a foot doctor to take a look at it because a lot of people don't know. That when you go, they'll be able to diagnose exactly what's going on in your body so you can fix it. He may not even know that he has an underlying health issue. He so see that yellow toenail. <laughs> now, man, a lot of men don't go to the damn doctor. Let's be clear. A unless lot of men dying, have eyes. Unless they're dying, they don't go to the daggone doctors. We have Most such a connection, know. girl. The only thing his toenail is connecting is that goddamn <laughs> street light. You look like you connect power equipment. That's what Listen, you look like. And, and, but, let, but let's be clear. Let's not act like um them, them people at the nail, sh- nail salon don't be turning people away for their feet. No. Oh, well, yeah, I've Someone seen it. Oh, I can't work on you. No. I met a guy. A lot, of people, a lot of people with like um who are diabetic can't get their feet done at the regular nail salon. They got to go see, I think, a podiatrist to Yikes. fix their feet because if they cut something the wrong way or they do something that can get mm-hmm. infected, they can get sepsis. Yep. So and guess what? Then your foot gets chopped off. There you go. So I went and I think you're being shallow. Thank oh. you for the compliment, but I think you're being shallow. <laughs> I think you need to rethink things with this guy. If you if you uh, feel like a connection, I don't think that's something where you should be like, oh, I don't want to deal with him anymore. No, like if yeah. you are feeling him, then try to help him. Don't force a pedicure on him. Yikes. <laughs> like some people don't like, some men don't like that. They do feel like that's a girly thing to do. So, okay. I mean... Well. That's force a, look, I, I, I like a good pedicure. Mm. Well, force a finger condom on them toes. How about that? Does that <laughs> masculate you? Does that no, make you my... feel like a man? Finger condoms <laughs> on your that badass toenail? I'm yeah. just saying, my mm. recommendation for her 
mm-hmm. is to recommend that he go get it looked at because it could be, and this is how you phrase it, it could be an underlying health oh. issue that may affect you in the long run. And because I care about you, I want to make sure that you go and get that checked out. That's or how you, you could, do it. Or you can try the market's approach. What the fuck is that? Get out. <laughs> get out. Get You're not out. Girl. And that's why this I is my know. segment in <laughs> <laughs> Because absolutely not. Girl, no. All right. And so that's all I have for this week. You guys tune in to next week so you can hear more of If It Were Me. Um, don't forget to send me your advice questions to my Gmail at lyricbravado at gmail.com. DM me them on my Instagram, my Twitter, or my Facebook at Lyric Bravado. From OnlyFans to trolling with Tigger Man. Up next. We'll be right back. Now, y'all, what the fuck is on the radio? Now, y'all know I'm a big fan of music, but I don't know what the fuck these songs be talking about today. You remember back in the day in rap, they had a conversation with you. Ice Cube said, just waking up in the morning, gotta thank God. I don't know, but today seems kind of odd. Scarface said, at night I can't sleep. I tossed and turns, candlesticks in the dark, visions of bodies being burned. Nowadays, I don't know what the fuck these motherfuckers are saying. They be... I not Tina all twerk for me. Hey. Fuck you gotta make a bowel movement. And the thing is, don't nobody wanna read. They be making up words and shit so they don't write shit down. We in the key lot, drinking tequila. Oh, we listen to B.I. Scamon Arila. Oh, hey, Miss Lida. Dida Tikaka. Bitch, spell it. I mean, you just understood what everybody was saying back in the day. Even the girls. Lil' Kim said, I'm the best that ever done it. The best to live it. I ain't no overnight success. God damn it, I was born with it. It just made sense. It was like a motherfucker was sitting at the table in front of you having a conversation. Not these motherfuckers today. They say shit that make you be like, bitch, what? This bitch talk about pound, pound, booty hole brown. Bitch, it sound like you need a wet wipe. Man, they in the motherfucking studios taking them perks saying any motherfucking thing, bitch. Booty hole, brown, green stains in my draw. Skeet, skeet, marks on the wall. Bitch, bitch, you need some wallpaper and a diaper. This ain't it. And nowadays, we can't tell the singers from the rappers. But we do know everybody holding the note that's off key and just tell them, throw that auto-tune on. Back in the day, the singers made you feel good. Remember when Luther was like, excuse me, miss, where are you from? And can I come? And possibly, can I take you out tonight? Bitch, now today, motherfuckers like, find me a window so I can jump out. Rob Wade. The shit is scurry. Nobody is opening their mouth so they can articulate their words. Nowadays, they rapping and singing through their teeth because their gums numb. Bitch, they high as shit. I mean, it is what it is. It's today's generation, but y'all go ahead. Y'all keep listening to them bitches breathe on the track. <sighs> Twerk son. Sound like this generation need a little bit more Kirk, Franklin. Melodies from heaven rain down on me. Rain down on me. La, 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 la. It fall on me. Rain. Because Molly, we in danger, girl. Let us pray. If it's on your timeline, he's already seen it. Time to troll with Tigga Man. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to another segment of Trolling with Your Boy Tigger Man. Now, when I say trolling, I'm trolling social media for some celebrity gossip international news, local news, and what's going on in your bedroom. Ain't that right, y'all? No. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Mm. Anyways. I know yellow toenails. Well, uh, all right, yellow toenails. But anyway, mm. <laughs> first we have up, oh, Wendy Williams. I know y'all heard about Wendy Williams. I did. She uh, is suffering from I'm going to make sure I pronounce it right. <laughs> Aphasia and frontal temporal, temporal, frontal temporal, yeah, frontal temporal, temporal dementia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she uh, recently speaking out on her recent health diagnosis, and while she's grateful for the love and support she's been getting, she is addressing the elephant in the room, which is she developed this uh, disease. Mm-hmm. And I feel bad for her. How do y'all feel about it? Um. I, I've had all of this voluntary empathy, I'm sorry, all this involuntary empathy for Wendy, even though she's been, you know, um, not so great to a lot of the greats. Um, I do, but I mean, she she's has... She's a social just, media queen. She's a social media it. queen. 
I get it. And I mean, that's cool, but I don't know. I mean, I don't want to see anybody hurting and hardships or anything else. But um, yeah, I mean, I just wish her well. You know, yeah, I don't I have a heaven or hell to send nobody to. But I'm right. Christian, like like our last listener. So go ahead. I feel the same. Um, I feel the same. I to me, if it wasn't for Wendy Williams, it wouldn't be no blogs that exactly. are like as successful as they are. It wouldn't be no shade yeah. room, no baller alert. Like no, none of that. Wendy really really was that girl, and. If you're going to hate on Wendy, then you're going to have to hate on blogs. You're going to have to hate on podcasts. You're going to have to hate on everything that just reports what people do. You know what I'm saying? What these celebrities is doing out in these streets. Like, Mm. honestly, I don't put any blame on Wendy. It's these celebrities getting themselves into these predicaments to have something to talk about. Yep. Hmm. You know what I'm saying, and then they use uh, that dice of, uh, well, all all news. If it, what is it, bad news is 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 good uh, because yeah. it's in the press, regardless. So right. like, no, no. Sometimes well, that should be real bad. Yeah. <laughs> so let me tell you my theory. My theory on Wendy is, I think that you know her being that gossip, being that snoop, pretty much doing the same thing that, like you said, all of the blogs are doing now. I think that it came during a time that information was less accessible. Like right now, we have too much information from celebrities. Like anytime they get a little drink, anytime they get a little inebriated, they go on live, they sit there, they drama. It's like right in front of our faces all the time. Where Wendy had to, you know, she she developed her fame and she built her career during a time that you had to be a lot more intrusive to get this kind of information from people. So I think that she may have gotten a more harsh kind of, I guess, view from the outside world than a lot of people may have gotten, you know, like nowadays that pretty much do the same thing, but it's all from a pool that we all know about because you did it live in front of all of us on the internet. So I I agree, I agree. But my thing is, Wendy yeah. had to get that information from somebody. Somebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she had her She sources, had to get this information so from she somebody. She's not psychic. True. You know what I'm saying? So that means somebody in the celebrities camp, yeah. uh, release the like security, and that's, or and that's what I'm saying. intern, I, or whoever spilled the beans. That's and I not what you fought for. You know what I'm saying? I think she catches way too much flack, and she honestly needs to be honored for mm. paving the way for some of these. Yeah. Um, journalistic platforms. Yeah, she has a, a documentary coming out too. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh gosh. Next we have up here, Dump Trump. Who? The Dump Trump. The Dump <laughs> Trump. <laughs> if you talking about them shoes, let me save it for my segment. Been... Oh, well, damn. <laughs> I mean, you could tell the story. You know what? Go ahead. Tell the no, story. No, I was just cause... no, I was just basically going to say uh, a day after. Trump was ordered to pay that $355 million um, in, in penalties. He released his Trump branded sneakers <laughs> Bro. at um, Sneaker Con. You got me fucked up. The shoes are, the shoes are like a, a high top, shiny, the shiny gold high top with an American flag detail on the back. Grow. Being sold as Never Surrender High Top for $399. Ooh. And people are buying them. Mm-hmm. I'm getting into that. So okay. moving on. Are you, yeah. are you okay. also getting into him saying I can only see the uh, black ones? Yeah, all of that. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Let's not yes. get past yes. that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's have up um Kim Kardashian. Mm-hmm. Kim Kardashian. She is a proud mama after Northwest career has been cemented on the Billboard charts. You oh. <laughs> to who? She's she's <laughs> oh, okay. She's one of the youngest art, youngest artists that ever do it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you Wednesday. said North or Kim? Oh, wait. No, Kim. Uh, no, no, North. North. Oh, okay. North. I thought you said says, Kim. On Wednesday, all 16 songs from Kanye West and Tyler Dollar uh-huh. Signs, um, Vir- Vultures, um, Vultures One album hit the Billboard Hot 100s, including North's breakout feature on the track Talking. 
Hmm. No contribution. <laughs> Debuted it at number 30 on the Hot 100s, causing Kim K to beam with pride for her baby. God. Resharing a post on Instagram. Inst oh, Lord, Instagram. <laughs> North Northwest earned she um posted on um Instagram the Northwest earns her first entry first ever entry on the Hot 100s this week with talking she becomes one of the youngest artists to ever chart at age ten Ooh. Northwest also made her premiere on Billboard's Emerging Artists chart an incredible feature for the 10 year old, but Jay-Z and Beyonce daughter Blue Ivy still holds the record for the youngest artist to crack the billboard charts. Of course she does. <laughs> but you know what? I'm glad to see both of those young girls win. And I'm always yeah. gonna, uh, despite who, how unsavory their parents are, I'm always gonna root for the kids. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, next up we have uh, DC Young Fly. Y'all oh. know who DC Young Fly is, right? Who? DC yeah. Young Fly. I don't know who that is. He's a he's a he's a comedian, yeah. but he's he not from Wildin' Out. On, on Wildin' Out, he's on Wildin' Who? Out too. What's and that? He, and his his baby mama um passed away from didn't she get surgery or something? Yeah, oh, some implants. She went to get some happened. implants and, and died. Okay, and, now I remember. So, mm. GC Young Fly is graciously asking the person responsible for swiping his book bag to return it pronto because its sentimental value outweighs the financial gain in this caper whatever that means okay oh, apparently dc yeah. yeah apparently dc had a gig at the hollywood improv last night but discovered his bag had gone missing following the let out of the show and he suspects that got taken by a thief mm. the comedian actor hopped on instagram this morning with a passionate plea for the bag to re be returned to him and it's incredibly sad because he says there was something inside that was the utmost important to him. According to DC, no cash or jewels were taken, but as it turns out, the backpack actually contained the death, death certificate of his girlfriend, Jackie O. Yeah, Only okay, I do remember reading this. Yeah. <clears throat> right, Only I remember reading children this with. So whoever stole that book bag, return it. Mm -hmm. Right, because you trifling as fuck. And I yeah, just want to know, why was he carrying the death certificate in that book bag? That's what I want to know. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. <clears throat> Huh? Okay, I take back the shade that I threw. I knew who he is, but I mean, okay, but only because, you know, of this situation. But I don't know. Yeah. You know, that that is sad. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's. I feel like death certificate should be in a safety deposit box. Yeah, exactly. Somewhere. Yeah. Why was he carrying that around in the book bag? Yeah, that's crazy. But who am I? It yeah. might be a therapeutic I mean, thing. He might not even be finished with sending stuff out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's like, also true. <clears throat> so he might have had errands to run that day. So I can't mm -hmm. fall. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she muted her mic. Yeah, my bad. I do fault, fault whoever took that shit. Get that shit back. Y'all are fucked up. You're not gonna get anything out of it because I feel right. some type of way. You know, I hate a motherfucking thief, mm. just like the motherfucker who stole my goddamn wallet while I was mm. in the hospital. <laughs> oh, mm. oh yeah, that's you right. ain't get no fucking money from that shit. My cards was on block. Mm. Crazy. Oh. Yeah, I hate a fucking thief. Yep. Crazy. Yep. But anyway, this one's for you, Marcus. No, just, just hilarious. Who? Jess Hilarious. I don't know who that is either. Jess Hilarious has made a bold suggestion claiming that Nicki Minaj invited Cat Williams on her tour may be due to poor ticket sales. The Breakfast, the Breakfast Club co-host made the remark in a new episode of Jess with the Mess. Uncut oh, where bro. she brings up Minaj recently saying she wants Williams to be part of her tour in some capacity. She said, um, she stated in there, I mean, she stated, when the fuck did Nikki and Cat Williams even have a fucking relationship to put him on her tour? The 32-year-old said, <laughs> <laughs> by insisting that people who do <gasps> these things like this are because their tours usually aren't selling. <laughs> Nobody thought putting just hilarious in front of a microphone was bad the first time. <laughs> then you're going to put her in front of a mic on a morning show and think that you're going to have a better outcome? Come on, seriously. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, well, well, anyways. But did she lie? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't like her, but she wasn't. You might wrong. not like her, but did she lie? She told no lies. Uh, <laughs> desperate times lie. calls for desperate measures. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Next because, up, we yeah. Had... She, yeah. Well, hold on. She also added um, Monica, I heard too. Yeah, she added you Monica. She did. She what? Monica on there too. And I'm about I to get into that. and I'm about to get into Monica too. Please <laughs> yeah. do. So anyway, with Monica, Monica is setting the record straight for all social media users who seem to believe she underwent a BBL search for <laughs> <Okay, girl. laughs> <laughs> over the weekend. A TikTok user with the username at simply the two four seven took the social media to upload footage from a Monica concert. In the clip, the scene could be seen supporting the green. I mean, sporting a green full length bodysuit as she sang her hit song, You Should Have Known Better, to the crowd. Additionally, the TikTok user captioned the clip with, That BBL and took Monica voice away. Oh. <laughs> the, TikTok video has gone, the TikTok video has gone viral. Of course. <laughs> Garnering over 1.5 million views. <laughs> that is top so, not trade. So Monica got um Monica saw the video and Monica. saw everybody. Monica saw the video and saw everybody commenting about her so-called BBL. That she decided to uh, post a little uh, video on um social media, basically Ooh. saying. I'll cut you if you keep warning your oh, mouth. Oh, she said, oh, y'all got jokes. Y'all got jokes. Let me tell you something. My health is far too... My health is far too... Bad. Yeah, too bad to be playing like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she said, um... She, she was like, no, um... And then she pointed at her stomach and said, well, why y'all ain't get this part in? Because she got a little gut now. <laughs> oh, bro. She was like, why y'all ain't get this part in? Y'all talk about my butt. Why y'all ain't get this part in? But then she goes on and said, uh, goes on and um, shows everybody a Spanx that she had that had butt pants in the Spanx. So oh. when she had that on, it made it look like she had a BBL. Mm. So, <laughs> so she, she had a to, false butt and she was yeah. wearing fake butts. Yeah. So she sure. wanted to set the record straight to everybody. She ain't got no BBL. Those nope. were just butt. Those were just butt pants she had on. First nice. of all, I feel like people should have known that. Because if, yeah. if Gunica wanted to go get a BBL, <laughs> she would have did that years at motherfucking gap. And you know it. Yeah. Gunica, Gunica don't yeah. play. Gunica. Right, Y'all <laughs> keep playing with Gunica if you want like. to. That's um, one thing I don't like. It was a certain you don't like, respect for like artists now now everybody got so much access to these people y'all just be so disrespectful in the comments it's crazy y'all would never walk up on some of these people and say that shit to their face ever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes the hey, well. she says stop playing with her stop playing with her ass as she should stop mm -hmm. playing with her ass gross stop. oh damn i mean it like that that means something <laughs> different <laughs> mm. i mean it like that <laughs> Okay, so anyway, Beyonce, she just recently launched her little hair product thing or whatever it is called Sacred. Little. Um, mm. I'm, I'm called, called Sacred. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. You and me was... On February 20th, mm -hmm. when fans headed over to the website and interacted with the brand... The brand story page, they are greeted with words from the singer. The 42-year-old explains why she took the step and um, speaks on how life, how this was a lifelong dream. Mm. She basically says in her video, it's been my lifelong dream to create these hair products and bring some of my mother's teachings to life. We Aww. started by prioritizing the needs of textured hair like mine and others who lack moisture and strength. It was important to honor past rituals while infusing our personal touch by adding advanced science to build new sacred rituals. The result was hair care defined by its performance, quality, and intention. Hair hmm. care that isn't <laughs> put into the same box others have tried to put me in as a black woman throughout my career. Hair care that will keep my hair healthy despite how often I change it up as a performer. The coloring, the high tension styles, sewing, sweat, and build up. 
I built Secret from ground. I built Secret from ground up. I poured it. In, I poured everything into it. I learned throughout my life so we can borrow some of our past and bring it to the future. She continued to say, "Secret is about pro Secret is about prioritizing yourself and all the things you hold sacred." Hmm. Go ahead, lyric. What you got yes, to say? Lyric. Uh. Um, the only thing I have a problem with is that verbiage. <laughs> Why she couldn't say routine? What's up with the ritual word? Uh, Y'all hey, hate us corny with that Illuminati. No, I'm not. Like, you're not helping it. You're not helping that. You're not helping, baby. Because, I'm, listen, I, numerous people who have been in her camp who are no longer in her camp have said, that she dabbles in witchcraft. Mm. I'm Maybe just you're not helping with the verbiage. You, you know how mama from New Orleans. That's what I'm mm. saying. New Orleans. Mm. That's what I'm saying. From the bayou. You gotta be careful, may- baby. Y'all coming from for Gunica and B in the same <laughs> yeah, segment? Yeah. Uh-uh, this is yeah. not blessed. Y'all, tr- y'all I'm live not in the- I'm just saying I don't understand the verbiage. You could have said routine. No, I understand. But that's- to me, when people say stuff like that, it's 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 a reason. It's I just want to know what the reason is. I don't know. Exactly. I saw those beautiful. I saw beautiful pictures of uh, Miss Tina braiding Beyonce's hair, who was Lady Blue's like, hair, who was braiding Rumi's hair. Like well, it was. I saw yeah. that on Essence. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love nice. that. I love yeah, that. That was nice. That was cute. Mm-hmm. I would just be very careful. Okay, and there you go. Okay. No. Oh, Offset. Offset. <laughs> Offset. Offset is campaigning for Cardi B to get her butt back into the studio and release her second album. It's been almost, ne- it's been nearly six years and she's acting like a scaredy cat. On Tuesday morning, Offset teased fans with a preview of Cardi's unreleased music by muting the sound but still throwing on the screw face to give off the impression that the track was too hot to handle. He motivated Cardi further. Um, captioning the post stop being a scare stop being a scary and drop the album shit goes crazy mm. and then he put fire he put um fire emojis at Cardi. oh he's back on set uh, uh, obviously somebody okay. needs to throw him back it's off for you buki uh, i guess <laughs> i guess but there's only one thing, there's only one thing i hate about people pushing female rappers back in oh you need to do this that and the third da, 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 because only because like people like Offset, people like rap, people, male people, or people that identify as male in general, if they are rappers, they typically don't try as hard as women. Women not only have mm. to be good, but they have to be twice as good as their yes. male counterparts out there in the world of rap. So even if she is being a quote unquote scaredy cat, she doesn't get the luxury of putting shit out. Should we flash back to a couple of episodes when everybody mm. was dragging this whole Nikki uh, Nikki Meg thing? So I mean, you see how much more critical and how much more eyes are on female rappers. And mm-hmm. I get it. If she wants to chill and make sure that her shit is set before she jumps back out there. You gotta have the vibe right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Anyway. Yeah, what and last but not least, Boosie Badass. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Boosie Badass. Oh, I'm turning this off. So, <laughs> so Boosie hopped on um, Twitter to give his opinion on trans women playing sports with cisgender women. Oh. <laughs> Boosie says it isn't fair. The female Rod man <laughs> is hurting all the girls on the basketball court in Massachusetts. He captioned a news clip of a trans athlete who injured a girl during a game. Two months ago, a tra- he says two months ago, a trans knocked, he said a trans knocked a girl's teeth out her mouth. A trans. <laughs> he definitely said a trans girl. A tr- <laughs> uh, did he say a trans girl or did he no, say he a, a trans. trans? He said a trans. Of course he did. The fucking Not ignorant ass. Girl, now, if somebody said, said a nig, <laughs> you'd have been it. Uh, never mind. Go ahead. I'm Dude. sorry. You're so he done. says a trans knocked a girl's teeth out her mouth. Like, what the fuck? Parents need to stop letting they kids play against men, female Rob, and um, he quoted female Rodman's schools across the country needs to forfeit every game. Then he says, this is not fair to our kids in the nation. This is sick. They say he has a full beard. Oh my God, parents, we have to fight for our kids' dreams and rights, knocking our daughters' teeth out. What? 
knocking our daughter's teeth out, parents can exactly kind of do what something about the simple is that it's unfair they need their own league. So, in other words, he says, um, trans women should not be um, in, in female basketball leagues. Quiet. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. I, I told you I'm gonna stop talking about people that have um, like he's died to me. He's dead to me. I'm just not gonna do it. Mm-mm. For what? Ew. I mean, he's never gonna be less of a dumbass. So why bother? How you feel about that, Larry? You know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. I have to, I'd have to research that because mm. my first thought would be like it would seem like they would have an unfair advantage. But you me. know what? As a but a as a cis heterosexual woman, I can appreciate you even looking and saying, you know what? Hmm, I don't know. Let me go look it up. Which something I'm sure Boosie has never <laughs> said out of his mouth. <laughs> Just saying. I mean, yeah, I would have to, I would have to research it. My first thought would be, it seems like it would be an unfair advantage. Like, I'm just thinking of like my daughter, like mm-hmm. if she was playing a sport. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm thinking of the, in terms of that. I'm not saying that they need their own league. I just I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. I I really haven't looked too much into that to even mm-hmm. speak about some shit like that. That wraps it up for this week's segment of Trolling with your boy, Tigger Man. Then I guess we'll move right along into unseasoned behavior. Up next on WRTR Real Talk Radio, we'll be right back. See what I did? I had vocals. My only commentary on Beyonce's new music is Stop inviting them to metaphorical cookouts based on white mediocrity because baby those songs weren't out a full 24 hours before the microaggressions came tumbling in. And it's not surprising because do y'all remember when they showed their asses over her performance at the CMAs that year? Remember when they refused to classify Old Town Road as a country song when Lil Nas X first dropped it? And now country stations are having to be pressured to play two very country songs by a globally popular artist. And this is what I mean by microaggression because those songs do not have country influences. They're country ass songs by a country ass lady. And it's internal too, because I've been seeing black folks say that this feels inauthentic. They feel that she's swerving into Taylor Swift's lane. A black woman got on this app and actually said that. And I get it because it's a semi new direction from a long established artist, but it also feels like y'all just don't understand the variety and the history of black people and music. Black musicians are foundational to country music and its reputation as a white genre is purposeful. And while Beyonce will be okay, I mean, she's Beyonce. There are other black people in country music who may not get their full acknowledgement within the genre. So the next time y'all see a white person vibe into black music and you want to let it leave your fingertips that they are invited to the cookout, consider whether you be invited to the honky tonk. Bye. Marcus has your glimpse into a world without seasoning. Guess what I'm talking about on my segment? Hmm, hmm. It should be no surprise. And I'm addressing the air trumps on my segment this week. But listen, I'm not addressing the obvious thing, which is the sheer existence of these things. Conveniently, after a shiny new debt (laughs) of $355 million dollars, Oh, and the denied request for an extension for this debt, by the way. And now suddenly he drops a sneaker line and at 300, what is it? $399 a pop? Yes. And it markets mm-hmm. it to who? Guess who it markets it to? Of you course. It. Of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and honestly, this, and <laughs> you know what? And honestly, this is completely on brand for Trump. I really don't expect more. But for whatever reason... For whatever reason, I was blindsided by black folks actually <laughs> purchasing this bullshit. Yep. Did y'all see right. people and posted online? Video. Posted videos with the people shoes. were Did online you? making videos about how they bought them and how they're going to be worth something someday when Trump is no longer here. Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Listen. I saw and you know, I'm not surprised by any of that fuckery. I'm going to just know what? You. To be fair, to be fair, I'm not from the future, and maybe they have the potential of a nice check during a hardship or a come up. But in the here and now of things, Mm-mm. funding this lunatic, 
<laughs> into a position that will allow other races to elect him into a position further to further eliminate programs that assist and aid us, further oppress us, and just ultimately basically eliminate us. This has got to be the stupidest thing that I've ever heard of black people doing. Is One of the stupidest. No, oh, no, no, no. I'm being extreme, but still, it's up there on the top ten. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's on the list. It's on the list. But you know what? You're giving him. You're giving money to a person that, with a demonstrated track and a demonstrated record of dishonesty and a desire to kill you, so that you can maybe have a potential paycheck sometime in the future if he don't kill you first. That's y'all's logic. Please make this make sense to me. I'm not surprised. So once again, you niggas <laughs> are mm. lathering yourselves with mayonnaise and sashaying around in your air trumps like you found the key to life. So here we sit. I'm done. Y'all are irritating. And I'm not done. Because I don't know why are you surprised. I mean, who you think voted him in in the first place? It wasn't me. You know what I'm saying? I know it wasn't yeah. you. But there were some black people who who pressed yeah. that button and and got him elected. <laughs> so I'm yeah, not but are yeah. they willing to push this button again? Is that what y'all really doing? Yes! Right? Are you kidding me? Make Did you not sense. hear about the about the people, the black people who were at his rally and they were asked to mm -hmm. leave? This just happened a couple weeks ago. Well, it's niggas, crazy. congratulations, y'all won the award this week for unseasoned <laughs> behavior. <laughs> You know a lot of bitches pretend to be crazy until they meet a real crazy bitch. So this girl, she got a big bark, but nobody never seen her fight. So everybody just think, oh, this bitch can rumble. Because she always just acting crazy and shit. You know, going off like this, like she conducting a choir, pulling her motherfucking eyelids down to her jawline, shaking her face like a vibrator, like the bitch is a cartoon. Now one day, Little Miss Crazy, get into it with a bitch named Big Cynthia. Now the hood caller Sid, for short, stand for psycho. So one day these bitches get to arguing and shit like most of you bitches do on the internet. So they finally link up around the hood. Crazy out there walking back and forth, stomping around and shit like a motherfucking drum major. Screaming loud and shit like she had a baseball game. She just hype. Where the bitch at? Where the bitch at? All that. So as little crazy over there doing that dancing dog performance, here come Big Cynthia. Calm ain't saying a motherfucking thing. Right at that moment, I knew that bitch escaped from death row. The bitch walked up in the middle of the street. She did her head like this, cracked her neck and shit, stood still, jawline strong as shit, ain't got no smirk on her face, ain't talking, ain't smiling. I said, oh, this bitch is a Sylvester Stallone fan. Bitch, that's Judge Dredd. That bitch is the law. He come crazy doing this shit. Bitch, come on. I ain't scared of you. I ain't scared of you. Bitch, you told on yourself. Bitch, you frantic. Bitch, you are holding your bowels. She doing all this shit like she driving the car. Come on. Come on. Bitch, come on. I said, oh, now she want to be Michael. This the moment right here when I knew they should have called the police. When Big Cynthia took off her shirt like a man, unclipped her bra and flicked it like a lit cigarette. Oh, her breast was just hanging down like babies dangling off a cliff. The nipples was big like the headlights on a GMC truck. But this the part right here when half the crowd ran. She hit her chest like Donkey Kong and her breast started vibrating like strings on a violin. So at that moment, even a little crazy realized, oh shit real out here. She started saying shit like, oh, I want who picked my kids up from school. I gotta go get them. Uh-uh, they ain't after kid, bitch, fight. She was saying all types of shit trying to make the enemy feel sorry for her and shit, bitch. Talking about stuff, we gotta hurry up and fight. I gotta pick my mother up from dialysis. But Big Cynthia ain't hit none of that shit. She started charging that bitch like a bull. I got so nervous for her. I said, Michael, stop. They said, who the fuck is Michael? Michael Mines. You see how that bitch walked up on her? Y'all stop. Cynthia gonna do something to her. Cynthia gonna choke that bitch blue. Stop, y'all, stop. I was so nervous. I started making up stories for the bitch like she was making up stories. I said, she gotta go up to the old folks home shady grove and make sure the africans give her father that medicine and shit you know they'll be giving people the medicine they're aggressive and they got an attitude and shit and they sit there all day and be ordering all that fake shit off the line come on y'all break it up oh we can't do this y'all get along get along take us to work take us on the go take us wherever you go wrtr real talk radio maryland dc <laughs> pennsylvania new york and texas are our top listener demographics this week on wrtr yes, real talk yes, radio yes. Hey. Welcome to the second half, where we discuss our week. Hmm. Mine's been therapeutic. Um, been Decent. going through boxes and bags of old stuff, kind of doing that spring cleaning thing in February. Mm -hmm. You know, 
out with the old and with the new, the new you know you wash your old shit even though you haven't worn it in forever you still watch it to keep it fresh that kind of shit mm. it's very therapeutic it brings up you know good feelings and all that good stuff what about y'all doing anything interesting this week no i ain't really doing shit <laughs> what? shoot my most interesting thing was this last week on thursday i took the um the new single about to drop on march 14th shameless oh, okay, okay, um, okay. to get mixed and mastered nice um, and so that's done i just sent that to out to the stores um to drop on the 14th so nice. i'm just waiting for that all right now i know that's right. anything i've done this week Mm. Keep a paycheck coming. Oh, you gotta know. Yeah, got to do something. Yes, yes, yes. What you got, yeah, Ticket my Man? Week, um, oh, gosh. My week is... <laughs> it's been, uh, okay. I can all, that's all I can say is... Uh, no. um, it's been different. Yeah, it's been different. It's been different. I've been, like I said before, like, like I said last year, work a little draining. I'm doing all this freaking training and stuff with these people. So still, yes, still. Mm. And it's mm. are they catching while. on? Mm, some of them and some of them are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like fuck it. Like, fuck it. Well, like it. make I'm room like, for the learning curve. Mm-hmm. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. Mm. You don't. But, yeah, Hang I'm, in there, Ting Ting. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. And my dog barking. I uh, hear. Crazy. Oh my god! And he's been driving. Me I gotta tell y'all a joke. So, yeah. Oh, we're ready. Uh oh. Go ahead. <laughs> Speaking of learning curve, mm. this guy on Instagram made a video, and he said, "Back when we was in school, we used to be separated from the special ed and special needs class." Okay. He said, "Now that we're grown, how can we tell?" Who was from the special? Oh, man. <laughs> I cannot. He said. He said. So the next time you get to arguing with somebody, or somebody don't understand simple stuff that you tell them to, just refrain from yelling back at them because mm-hmm. they could very well be from the special. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked oh, up. I'm not gonna do that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is <laughs> awful. But actually, true <laughs> if you think problem? about it. Who know. is it? All this road rage going on. You don't know who you're driving next to. That's true. That is true. Hmm. That, that is so true. Speaking of stupid shit, right? I was pulling news stories, but I came across that, like, I came across one that in my drunkest of days, my partiest of days, the days that you would pass out in your car because you knew you couldn't drive, mm-hmm. them type of days, I would have never even imagined doing so. I'm going to share with y'all, right? Uh, Did y'all hear about the man in London? Uh Uh-uh. All right. All right. This article says police in England say a drunken driver did the right thing after doing the wrong thing. Mm. An emergency dispatcher received an unusual call just before noon Monday when a motorist reported that he was driving drunk and said that he, quote, doesn't know what he is doing. Nor (laughs) should... Uh, he said the man said that he had a rough weekend. The man calls the police to report that he is a drunk driver. Oh, <laughs> hold up! Ah. Who does that? <laughs> Who mm. does that? Listen, yeah. officer. When the officers arrived, the man he was fifty-two years old or is fifty-two years old. Fifty-two-year-old man was in a van on the side of the road. A breath test revealed that he was three times oh, over the oh. legal limit. Damn. He was arrested Monday and held in custody and released after being charged Tuesday with drunken driving and you know his district. So <laughs> I'm just <laughs> like I'm drunk. So he's gonna drive drunk. He's gonna drive drunk. Pull over and call the cops and let the cops know that he's. I'm never drunk. gonna condone driving drunk. any bad behavior that I may or may not have participated in. <laughs> However, <laughs> at some point in life, but I will say that I've never been to that i don't know how where what is that like <laughs> where what's it like to live there i want to know where you can <laughs> live because i think of different shit as a black man if i get pulled over i'm already gonna be oh, okay <laughs> well, this was england and it was england uh, he was not my color so <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh. 
Anyways, what files up next? This discourse has resurfaced on Twitter where black gay people are being asked whether we identify by race or sexuality first. So I'm just here to issue you all a reminder that you are not black first and you are not gay first. You are everything at the same goddamn time. It does not matter what society sees you as. It does not matter if you can hide or conceal your queerness. It does not matter what straight black people tell you. Baby, you are both black and queer all at once. The very notion that we have to prioritize which marginalized identity gets recognized first is to spit in the face of intersectionality. It erases the fact that in black spaces, queerness is a source of contention and subjugation. And in non-black queer spaces, blackness is a source of contention and subjugation. Those experiences happen simultaneously and they feed off of each other, often leaving us starving. It is so necessary that we advocate for ourselves and others in ways that are inclusive, intersectional, and complete. Because in the words of my goddamn self, allowing motherfuckers to prioritize which parts of your identity they want to recognize first will always leave some part of you behind. Why do you have roaches? The why, the why, 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 why do my children hate me? On WRTR Real Talk Radio. Why did my vagina burn? The truth is out there. Explaining the unexplained. We're answering why to the questions you want to know by taking your tweets at WRTR Radio. You can hit us up on our email at, what is it, WRTRRadio at gmail.com. And we take your Facebook messages at Facebook.com forward slash WRTR Real Talk Radio. This is the WAP Files. Remember, the truth is out there. Mm. Volunteers for first or me? Me. I'll go oh. first. I actually have one from the internet this week. Yay! Yeah, you got right. <laughs> this why question comes from Carissa. Right. Carissa wants to know, why do men expect 100% of respect, but only trying to do 50-50 when it comes what? to finances? Ooh. What? <laughs> so you want a hundred percent results on a fifty percent budget? Gotcha. <laughs> wow. Go niggas. Mm. I can't answer that because I'm not a man. So. Mm. Wow. I can tell you this. What y'all think? I am not that person personally, I'm but I have person. dealt with some. I've dealt with some, and let me tell you, she's not lying. <laughs> Listen, oh. Carissa. They will. They will absolutely nickel and dime their own wallet and want all of what's in your purse and then some. Mm. They will. And I mean, like, and they demand um, they will. They demand respect. Oh, you're going to respect me as a man. This, that, and the third. I mean, even old boy with the yellow toenail. I swear, I'm traumatized <laughs> by this. <laughs> even him, even that him that's my, Even that's him with that yellow wife. toe now. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, <laughs> even with, exactly. But even with that, he's like, you know, she's like, hey, can I, can we get you a pedicure? And he's like, no, I ain't gonna be no bitch made nigga. Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, your bare foot slows traffic. Um, I don't understand <laughs> what's going on here, sir. Shady, shady, shady. Um, I don't get it. <laughs> Oh, I don't get God. it. Why? Because the niggas are dumb. I mean, we already mm. All right. Uh, take a man next uh, or me? Wife. Well, you just did your wife. No. She no, did. I did. Oh, oh, no, no, oh, yeah. Well, not mine. My wife was, 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 was going to be, um, why do why people walking around with a yellow cracked toenail? Mm. <laughs> yellow cracked toenail. I forgot yeah, about yellow that. Yellow cracked toenail. That makes it even worse. Why? That means... The fungus crawled on the inside and like made babies and stuff. You got a whole damn like microorganism colony living on your foot. You nasty <laughs> bitch. You told her to stay with him. Oh no, that is just trifling. Get your nasty ass out my. Ugh. I can't. I, but, and why, why do some people feel that they don't need to take care of it? I, I don't understand that. I mean, that don't have you, that struggle. You should be to walk on. You should be to walk around. Dude. And there's a lot of um, 
health benefits to taking care of your feet too. Your yeah. feet have a lot of different nerve endings and exactly, and exactly. Spots on your feet. Exactly. Like if you ever um, get into like reflexology, there are certain Chakras. pressure points mm-hmm. on the bottom of your feet mm-hmm. that can yep. basically take care of what your ailment yep. is within the rest yep. of your body. Your body. Yep. I mm. saw that. I read that. It's mm-hmm. fact. True shit. Yeah. But why would your toenail need to be yellow? Like, I mean, is this like a thing? I mean, are you hunting prey? Like, what happens <laughs> what? here? Where? Like, I don't get it. Okay. Anyways. And it's cracked down the middle. Mm. <laughs> why? Because the truth is out there. Phew. <laughs> all right. I got one. It screamed all lives matter. So, of course, I chose it, right? Uh-huh. Pamela from Georgia. She wants to know, why do Trump supporters always get accused of being racist? Anybody else? Or uh, y'all want me to answer this? You can answer that. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> typically. Who says that? Who, who is saying that a racist? Uh, she says that Trump supporters get um, get the rap for being racist also because they uh, are voting for Trump. No, because right. some yeah. black people voted for Trump. And so they <laughs> Some Hispanic That's people voted exactly. for Trump. No, we only call the racist racist. Duh, dummy. Mm. <laughs> people who say shit like that, dummy. Mm. <laughs> and we'd probably talk about you. The right, fuck you exactly. talking about you? Exactly. Not right. to mention the fact, I mean, if you want to talk about Trump as a person, you're back in a, a bad looking cause there, sweets. And a defendant, I mean, I'm just going to say this. Trump's actions they're just not reflective of the job he's seeking. It's not. It's like Taylor Swift trying to be a singer. How are you a rich failure? How are you? How's that happen? Let that resonate. You're rich. You're white. More money than you could ever reasonably need and still a failure at life. Go Trump. So Pam Mm -hmm. from Georgia, why can't your fave be loyal to the shit of a country that y'all claim to be so passionate about? Why is your fave outwardly racist and regularly offensive and you're okay with that? Hmm, Pam? Seems uh, like you got some truth seeking to do <laughs> <for yourself. laughs> uh, And that it's out there. And what Black Lives Matter really means yeah. instead mm. of making it all about you. Mm. No, we're terrorists. Black Lives Matter are terrorists. Mm. Simple things. You mm. know, because you want to live in your ignorance, bitch. Mm, bitch. Stay there. It is batch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, batch. <laughs> mm, truth is out there, Pam. And that wraps it up for this week's Wild Falls. Always answering why for you at WRTR Radio on Twitter. Y'all know all the other links because News to Make You Nauseous is up next. Mm. Truth is out there or something clever that I should probably insert here, but won't. <laughs> These lights are so bright in my eyes that I can't see too many people out there. But uh, I can only see the black ones. I can't see any white ones, you see. That's how far I've come. That's how far I've come. That's a long, that's a long way, isn't it? These lights. (laughs) Uh, We've come a long way together. Lynn Patton. We going to vote for who because we love sneakers? This is connecting with black America because they love sneakers. They're into sneakers. They love the, you know, there's a big deal, certainly in, in the inner city. So when you have Trump roll out his sneaker line, they're like, wait a minute, this is cool. He's reaching them on a level that defies and is above politics. The culture always trumps politics. And Trump understands culture like no politician I've ever seen. Question for you on that point, though. Yeah. Will the people that are excited about the sneakers and excited about Donald Trump Will that translate into them going out and voting for Donald Trump? Well, anybody willing to put 400 bucks down for a pair of sneakers? Yeah, I think that's commitment and love. I it's hope something. You're right. It's something. It's effect. <laughs> Number one, we not going to ignore the way they've criminalized diversity, equity, and inclusion. Plus, these shoes is ugly. Number two, outside of Candace Owens and the rest of the Blexit Brigade, who do you think is going to be interested in the air fraud ones, the January 6s? They gold, red, white, and blue. No. Number three, ain't no way in hell y'all think the January 6s, the air fraud ones, is going to make us forget about how y'all have bastardized the concept of being woke that come from our culture and community in the same sentence you're talking about how this man is so equipped of understanding culture. Oh, you smoking dope and dog food. Number four. 
Fox News was engaging in textbook pathological race hustling. You see what I'm saying? And race baiting, talking about some black people going to vote for us because they love sneakers. If you're willing to pay $400 for the sneakers, of course you're a vote for them. Who going to tell them? Number five, do y'all really believe after y'all chastise my community for supporting criminals that we going to support this criminal right here? Hell no. Nah. Number six, we stand with the watermelon state, not the apartheid state. We know where you stand at. You know what we talking about right now? That you out your goddamn mind if you believe them ugly ass sneakers will make us just forget who you really be cheeking up with. Number seven, I still ain't forgot when he said that there are fine people on both sides and the other side was some tiki torch carrying maniacs. I still ain't forgot that. And them ugly sneakers, they ain't helping no better. And now, now. Say what? News to make you nauseous on WRTR Real Talk Radio. Let's go. Tuberculosis, which is a lung infection. Jaundice, which is a liver disease. Psoriasis, oh. a skin condition. And thyroid problems can cause yellow nails, which oh. is an underlying health condition. And disgusting. Just Again. <laughs> <laughs> and that's news to make you what? I am definitely doubled over. These are some of the stories you might not read about in the New York Times, the Washington Post, or the Wall Street Journal. This news to make you nauseous. My name is Marcus Smoot. My name is Miss Lyric Bravado. And this your boy Tigger Man. And this is news to make you nauseous. All right, say what, Jacksonville? Say what? A man with a compromised immune system had 100 and 50 live bugs extracted from inside oh. his nose and sinuses <laughs> earlier this oh. month. <laughs> I saw that. I saw mm -hmm. that and couldn't read it. <laughs> I could not read it at all. I just read the um <clears throat> the caption. I was like, oh hell. No. What? Oh. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, what, no, go, go in the detail. Like, what kind of roaches? Are you going to say right. go, go in the detail? <laughs> 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 Absolutely not. Absolutely not. How do you have 100 bugs in your nose? 150. 150. Was it roaches? Mm -mm. All right. So the patient experienced severe swelling. Severe swelling and nosebleeds before seeking medical attention. That makes sense. This was in Florida, by the way. It's on brand. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, the doctor that treated him discovered the bugs feeding on the patient's nasal oh! and sinus tissues, oh, posing a serious risk to his health. Quote, unquote, they were right up against the skull base, right under the brain, said the doctor. That's crazy. Right? That is crazy. The larvae, which have not yet been identified, were of mm. various stages of development in different mm -mm. sizes. Same mm -mm. as large, <laughs> same as large as the end of a pinky. I'm sorry, some as large as the end of a pinky finger. Mm -mm. Yo, the end of your pinky finger. Mm -mm. 150 of them niggas. That's nasty. Yo! Oh, it's making me itch. Ah! <laughs> Just thinking Yo. about that making me itch. And, uh, hold on. Quote another doctor, quote, there were certain larvae inside the nose that were scurrying around and looking for places to feed and others that had burrowed into the tissue. So imagine like somebody turning the light on inside your head and like the roaches scatter in the kitchen. Imagine that happening in your nose. That's nasty. And then this is in there. That's nasty. There you go. So That's I think nasty. I win news to make you nauseous. That's, That's nasty. Unless y'all got something. What you got, Miss Lyric? Oh. Uh, catch me off guard, <laughs> D. My bad. All right, my I got one. <laughs> Say what, Detroit? Say what? A 17-year-old male has been charged in the fatal shooting of a Detroit area man who had been trying to expose sexual predators by posing as a teenage girl on social media and unauthorized sting operations. Oh. Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald announced the charges of homicide carrying a concealed weapon and using a firearm during a felony. There is no evidence that the shooting was related to any sting operation being conducted by Robert Wayne Lee II, McDonald's office says Thursday. Lee 40 was shot 
in September 2023 at a restaurant in Pontiac, northwest of Detroit. Surveillance video shows Lee entering the restaurant and approaching a booth where the suspect and his 18-year-old friend were seated. McDonald's office said in a release, Lee began fighting with the 18-year-old and suspect, 16 at the time. And then they were seen firing several shots at Lee. Both teenagers fled the restaurant, but later were arrested. Lee died at a hospital. Lee had gone by the name Bupak Shakur. Bupak <laughs> Shakur? Yeah. What? On social media, his crusade had led to several criminal charges against several men, but his work also misidentified one person as a sexual predator, the Oakland County Sheriff's Office has said. Some videos posted online show Lee and others aggressively confronting alleged sexual predators in public places. Gross. One of Lee's videos posted in 2022 led the Sheriff's Office to arrest a probationary jail deputy who oh. attempted to arrange a meeting and have sex with someone who he believed was a 15 year old girl. The deputy mm. was fired. Wow. Um, so the prosecutor's office said it has asked for the teenager who did who committed the crime to be tried as an adult. If convicted, he could be sentenced as a juvenile or a adult. The judge also said that they could give him a blended sentence that incorporates both juvenile rehabilitation and adult punishment. Wow. That's wow. wild. So he ended up killing uh, like the vig- vigilante. Vigilante. Oh. Vigilante. Vigilante. Wow. Batman. Oh, wow. Huh. He killed Batman in the hood. Wow. That's well, crazy. you understood the assignment. I'm nauseous. Say what, South Carolina? Say what? The parents of a South Carolina child faces ch- charges in her death after officials said she was submerged into scalding water as a punishment. Oh, my God. Oh, my yes. God. Richland County Sheriff Leon, Leon Lott said the parents, Wilbur Fields, 34, and Fifi Hill Fields, 32, were both- Fifi Hill Fields? Yes, Fifi Hill Fields. Where is that? Where you live? <laughs> Ain't you from Fifi Hill? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Said we're both arrested Wednesday and charged with homicide by child abuse and two counts of neglect. The charges come after the death of their four-year-old daughter, Hope Fields. Um, he said the Beefy event- Hill. Yeah, right. Hope Fields from Beefy <laughs> Hill. God damn. Right. <laughs> he said the investigation began on Friday, February 16th at 10 p.m. when Richland County investigators were called to Prisma. Children's Hospital about the unresponsive child. The four-year-old was brought to the hospital by EMS with severe burn injuries and a fractured fem- femur. Mm-hmm. Um, Ooh, that had to hurt. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. He said the injuries were so severe that as the child was transported from her home to the hospital, God. she suffered three cardiac arrests. Wow. Hope Fields was on life support for two days, but died from her injuries. In investigations so invest, investigations discovered that the incident happened about 6 p.m. on Tuesday, February 15th at the family's home on Smallwood Road. So Lodge bad. said Wilbur Field admitted to investigators that he submerged the child in scalding water after she soiled her pants and the victim and the victim's mother admitted to being present and aware of the incident. So the thr- when can we dunk them in scalding water? Exactly. Three other children ranging in age from five months to 10 years old were in the home when the incident happened. Um, Mm. The officer said it's hard to understand how a parent can abuse the child, abuse Mm. their child. As a father of four, child abuse is one of the worst crimes that can be committed in some of the toughest cases for our investigators to work because you never forget the children. He said the three children were placed in emergency protective custody. Both suspects are being held at the Alvin Escalade Detention Center. That's crazy. So, because your child peed on herself, you're going to dump her in some scalding water. I want to dump them in some scalding water. When is the hoedown? Let's go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. crazy. If you want these and more nauseating news stories, make sure you follow us on Twitter at WRTR Radio. I'm at M-A-R-C-U-S-S-M-O-O-T. That's Marcus Smoot. 
And you can find me at Lyric Bravado on all social media platforms except for Pornhub, all the X-rated sites, and oh. OnlyFans. Oh. Can't find me there. Sorry. And you can find me, Tiggerman, on Facebook at Tony Tiggerman Nelson and on Instagram and X at Tiggerman82. And you can also find me on OnlyFans. All right. Thanks, so... thanks for your support. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did they send you little comments like I'm mm. I'm listening to you right now and mm. touching myself? Mm. All right, real talk. I figured with that depressing news to make you nauseous, let's uh you know not lose <laughs> all of the listeners. Let's turn it up a little bit for real talk. So we're gonna have something fun. We'll be right back. A billionaire complaining about paying one million dollar in taxes is equivalent to someone worth a hundred thousand dollars complaining about paying a hundred. Just think about that for a second. The scale of wealth amongst the 1% is so vast, it's ridiculous that raising taxes is somehow considered controversial. Come and think about it, when the orange man was in office, one of his buddies passed a law that allowed for individuals that make over $400,000 to get a whole bunch of tax cuts, and us folks that respond to that, oh, you paying more taxes. You noticed it in the last few years, haven't you? America is a country where billionaires find it cheaper to finance elections to get people who will cut their taxes than just pay their damn taxes. This is called democracy, apparently. Good old capitalism. Here goes a joke, maybe. Why do billionaires care if they lose all their money? They'll just make it back with their superhuman work ethic, right? Besides... If they become the poorest, then all the money will simply trickle back down to them until they're rich again. Basic economics, people. <laughs> Keeping it 100. It's Real Talk. On WRGR Real Talk Radio. We keep it real. All right, to do. As promised, thought we had some fun this week with Real Talk. So somebody sent me this list of signs that you're getting old, right? And I read through this list, and some are debatable, so I thought it would be kind of fun, and I think I'm in good company with a um, 40 and over, or at least 40 approaching crowd. Um, tell me if some of these things happen to you also. I'm 36. Of oh, sure. Um, number one, you sometimes speed to get your, to your destination, just so you don't forget where you're going. No. Okay. So you're not old yet. Now, this is according to this list. <laughs> number two <clears throat> your speed dial consists of majorly of people with md behind their name so basically like you got a whole bunch of doctors and stuff in your phone but not necessarily no. many social no. contacts no <laughs> all right number three when you meet up with friends your discussions primarily concern health conditions medications doctors <laughs> and fiber <laughs> we there yet what are they doing at <laughs> I'm at, at Shady Pines. All right, number four. <laughs> Your favorite team doesn't play sports, but instead consists of the doctor, <laughs> cardiologist, pharmacist, and urologist who make up your medical team. So basically, your social circle is them niggas treating you. Mm -mm, no. Number five. You now categorize seniors in three ways. The quote-unquote young old, who are 65 to 74 years old, and their quote unquote go go years. And the middle old, who are 75 to 84 in their slow go era. And the old old, who is 85 or older, just because, you know, they old. Yeah. Mm. Number, number six, you might hear, quote, snap, crackle, and pop at the breakfast table, even when you're not eating cereal. No. You don't hear no craps, <laughs> no pops. No. Not, not when I'm eating cereal. I said, no, they said when you're not eating cereal. So basically, oh, you pop without at any time. Yeah, not, you just be popping I'm and cracking. I don't do it. I'm not, oh. I do it. Like I'll crack. Like I'll go like this. Oh mm. my! Yeah, I'll be cracking my knuckles sometimes. I crack, oh. and I can do it with my ankle too. So it doesn't like naturally when I walk pop pop. pop, 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 pop. My, oh my ankle back my my bones nah. My ankle oh. like that. Mm -mm. Your ankle just literally popped. See, yo, it just did. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, we see you, Grandpa. What else? <clears throat> All right, number seven. You might con uh, number seven. You might conduct an extensive search for your ten pairs of reading glasses, only to eventually find one of them is on top of your head. 
So oh, you basically, that shit that we do with our phones now. Where's my phone? And it be in your hand? Uh uh-uh, uh, no. That's no. just me. Just me then. That's mm-hmm. you. Oh. That's you. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and then all I'm right. getting no hell with y'all then. <laughs> it, it'll be all right. <laughs> Number eight. <laughs> you badly. <laughs> <laughs> ah! uh, your body stops growing vertically and starts expanding horizontally. Oh. Mm. oh. Number nine, it takes you double the time to look at maybe half as good. Hmm. So it takes you longer to look better. Hmm. Or to look worse, I'm sorry. I guess. Okie dokie. And number 10, the smoke detector goes off when all of the candles on your birthday cake have been lit. Congratulations, you're old. Oh, you old. Nope. <clears throat> nope. Because, uh, Ticket Man, you ain't but a year behind me or two. Uh, no, no, no. Two. Two. Get it, mm. get it right. Get it right. Just saying. Just saying. Don't act like your ankles didn't just pop, right. sir. Oh, mm. Right. Mm-hmm. We all. both, me and Lyric, been both sitting here on this podcast a few times where you opened your mouth and your teeth fell out. Whatever. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wraps up this week on Real Talk on WRTR, Real Talk Radio. All right. Uh, y'all got anything left before we get out of here? Miss Lyric? No, nope. I'm just, you know, responding to racism right now as we speak. Oh, oh Lord. What happened? <laughs> So, you know, the story that I just read, uh, News to Make You Nauseous, somebody Correct. just pissed me off oh. with their fucking comments, and I'm going to read it in real time, oh. because this was put two hours ago, and this is why we said what we said, Pam. Oh, is it the same Pam? Pam's ain't winning no. on the show today. No, 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 no. I'm talking to Pam, because this is why we we feel the way we feel. Oh, We need to return the gorillas back to their natural habitat. Uh, okay. Abraham Lincoln tried to, but the Dems blocked his efforts despite he secured the funding for travel and purchased an entire country, Liberia. Freed slaves could have voluntarily went and had an ex- all expenses paid one way trip to their native continent, but instead, here we are faced with guerrilla culture. Oh. And my mm. response to that was and someone should have told your mother to swallow you. After that Uh-oh. gangbang that resulted with you. Because <laughs> who are you wow. talking about? And this is why racism still exists. And this is why we call out. Because people <laughs> like you and people like this are obviously Trump supporters. <sighs> right. Oh. And so we said what we said. Mm. Who oh, will check my- it? Well. I'm done. So I guess we'll holler at y'all next week. Bye. <laughs> WRTR Real Talk Radio. This week's show features talents from TikTok creators Chris the Author, I Am Lonnie B, and The Consciously, using our platforms to elevate our voices.